Hi, Andrea here, and this is my review on the Hammer N44 Bandsaw from Felder Group. This is my first bandsaw and I cannot compare it to the others or give you an advice of buying one. However, I can tell you that this is strictly my opinion on this machine. I have no interest from Felder by making this review and me and my brother bought this machine with our money so we can do and say whatever we want to. We bought it in January 2020 and received it in June of 2020. Normally the saw comes in around three and a half months but due to the Covid it was a little bit delayed. We paid 1,800 euros for this saw. This is 420 mm bandsaw with 310 mm of the resaw capacity. The 420 mm number is actually the distance from the saw blade to the post of the body of the saw. It accepts 3,976 mm blade in width from 6 to 35 mm. The solid cast iron table can tilt from minus 5 degrees to 45 degrees. Standard equipment motor on this saw is 2.5 kW 3 phase motor, but we ordered ours with the conversion to the single phase. So now let's talk about the things we like about this saw. This saw has plenty of power and we have never stopped it with normal usage. As the same with any saw, you need to use the appropriate blades TPI and width for the intended cut. We have tested it with 300mm in white oak and it cuts like butter. There are two windows on this saw. One is here on the front of the saw and this shows you the tension of the blade you need to apply. The other one is on the side of the saw and this one shows the tracking of the blade. There is a wheel behind the saw that adjusts top wheel tracking and on the bottom wheel you need to use a wrench. We didn't have any needs to adjust the bottom wheel. Unlike the rough cast iron table that are on the saw and on the jointer, the table on the band saw is really smooth and this makes for easy wax application. The saw's dust collection performs quite well. Some dust collects inside of the body of the saw and periodically you need to vacuum it out. But I'm really satisfied on how it performs. Table angle adjustment. It is quite easy to set the table from 0 to 45 degrees, but if you want to go to the minus 5, you need to remove the bolt and then angle it that way. Since we had it, we haven't used any angle cuts on this saw, so we don't really use it. The light on the saw, we bought it separately and we found it on eBay much cheaper than the Felder sells themselves. This has a magnet and it's flexible also, so you can adjust it to your need. This really comes in handy when those pencil lines are difficult to see. The fence is very well made. It runs on the solid steel bar and it locks firmly into the place, always at 90 degrees. And now the things we don't like about this saw. So the first one in order is the guides. It's really hard for me to explain because I haven't had any experience with the other band saws. But these guides are uh, not hard to set up, but they are really hard to tighten up once they are set up. In few occasions in the past, because of the cuts that you are making, the saw makes a vibrations, they actually came loose. So we figure out that we had to tighten it really hard with the hands to be able to hold its position. I don't like the post that carries the guides on this saw either. It's a little bit flexible and that can sometimes move also the, the bearings out of the place. I'm not that I'm not happy it performs, but I think it could be made better and probably that's the case on the Felder line of the machines. Also, it is quite hard to move by hand because they install this very little wheel on the back and moving it causes a lot of tension on the wrist and it's not smooth either, as you can see. Tension on this saw. You have to move this wheel on this saw to tension the blade appropriately. And depends on the width of the saw, you need to move it quite a lot if you're having a very wide saw. And that can take uh, quite a long time to do. I only wish that they had the lever on the back of the saw, like American saws, and you can retension and uh, tension it very easily. 
To access the blade on this saw, you need to open the little two locks on the side of the saw, and then you can open the door. However, there is a little bottom guard on this saw, and you need to lower it down before you open the doors, because otherwise it will hit the cast iron table. And finally, what I don't like about this saw is the button power here. You can see it's quite exposed and visible on the outside of the saw. This is good because you can see where to turn on and turn off the saw. But it's also not safe for this place in particular because we are on the school ground here and there are some school visits during the day, so the children come into the shop. Of course, they don't use any of the power tools, that's not allowed, but they can turn on the saw really easily and when there are a lot of kids here, I cannot be mindful of everyone. The solution for now is for me to actually unplug the machines or just uh, take off the breaker from the machine. But in the future, I would like to have some enclosure that you have to lift up and then turn on the saw. And when you want to turn it off, you just uh, push it with your hand down. I really like that on some of the machines that I saw in the United States. And I wish the hammer line would went that way. Also on the other machines that we have, the jointer and our Felder K700 saw, they also have the same thing and this is, in my opinion, this could be made a little bit safer for the users also. And now the tension sticker that you have may seen on the saw. We actually cut a piece of tape and just wrote tension on it because it happened to us that we came in the middle of the work to the saw and you're in the mood of working and then you forgot that you put the tension on the blade. You turn on the saw and what happens because the saw blade isn't tensioned, it slips off the bottom wheel and just stays like that. Nothing really happens to the saw, but then you have to open the doors from the saw and then put the blade back and re-tension the blade and also make sure that it's in between the bearings on the bottom and on the top because it falls from there too. That takes a lot of time and it gets on nerves a little bit. So I think that Felder could have placed a little bit of sticker here that says check the tension before turning the saw on. Because of I said of the bottom that it's not as safe as it could be, when I make this cup that goes on top, I could actually design some kind of sticker and then put it there to place the tension. But for now, the tension sticker will be here, I think so. And this goes to my favorite quote, actually. They said that nothing is as permanent as a temporary solution. So the final conclusion. All things considered, well, what we like and don't like about this saw, at the end we really like this saw because it's the first band saw that we have in the workshop and it's also a very useful tool to have. I don't know how we lived without one before. And to be on the side of the hammer, this is the only machine that actually from the hammer line that work without any problems. We did have a little bit of problems with the table not being perfectly flat, but with a servicer from TOTUS, he came and made it flat with some shims. And now it works just fine. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, that really helps me. And also share it, it goes a long way in supporting my channel. I also wanted to thank my Patreons that continuously support me on my Patreon page. If you want to, you can donate there and it really helps us. If you haven't subscribed to my channel to keep up with me and to see more reviews like this or project videos. Thank you and see you soon. Bye! Ouch. Ah. The post that deter the post that determ that determines the tension on the saw blade on this saw. Oh, that's a lot of words. We didn't have any needs to adjust the bottom wheel. Wheel.